Rose, answer. Sorry for the delayed response. Answering seems to be what to do right now. Rose, jeez! Finally! You sure seem to be absorbed in whatever you were doing on that computer. Were you talking to someone? Oh, right. I forgot I gave you the code for the crystal ball. And here I was, thinking I could safely delay responding to messages without seeming like an ass. The way it usually works. Oops. Oh, no, no, I, I don't blame you for not responding. You must be very upset. Are you okay? Why would I be upset? Um, because... Uh, I figured you would have found out by now, but I guess you still don't know. Know what? About John's dad. And your mom. Rose? Hello? Oh, no. something. You're making me nervous. I should have gone looking for her. Why didn't I? Um, because you were trying to make the best of the situation. John was too, but he went to look for his father. It would have been normal of me. I can't remember what I was trying to prove anymore. I don't think you should be so hard on yourself about it. John was being John and you were being you. Which I guess meant taking our problems very seriously and putting all your attention on solving them. And anyway, you and your mom had a much trickier relationship than John and his dad, didn't you? I mean, not that I'm saying you were any less attached to her than him. Ugh, I don't know if I'm very good at consoling people. Sorry, Rose. I don't want to make you feel worse. You're doing fine. For someone raised by a dog. Or really... Anyone. Thanks. <sighs> Okay, you know, now we have all lost guardians. Dave lost his and I lost mine in a weird way. Um, even though that was pretty much definitely my fault. And even the trolls lost all their monster guardians. I think that maybe it is an inevitable part of the game that can be cruel sometimes. For some reason, despite all the danger, I never thought she was in any trouble. I never believed she would actually die. I grew up with the feeling that something more significant had always been meant for her. That she was a heroine, displaced in some way, resigned to the inglorious duty of raising me and preparing me in her way. I didn't actually need the ectobiological verification that she was like a mother and a sister at the same time. I always understood that somehow. And I felt that she had knowledge and ability beyond what she let on. It was always intimidating, but nonetheless a source of respect, which was childishly begrudging on my part. I think she was just waiting for me to catch up with her. But now I can't. Uh, I am so sad. Rose, I think you're being stronger about it than I am. Probably because my emotions have now ceded to anger. This shouldn't have happened. Oh, well, I just hope you aren't thinking of doing something rash. I already was. I was going to go to sleep, fly to the sun bigger than our universe, drop a bomb in it, and kill myself. Yeah. So if my course of action is to change on account of my mood, it can only become less impetuous, don't you think? Uh, I don't know. You never liked my plan very much anyway. Well, no, but I was trusting that you had thought it through and it was our best hope. I'm not sure if I did. Maybe it was a terrible plan. I made it without a full understanding of the nature of the scratch. Huh, then what will you do? I could stop being so cowardly for once. I could short-circuit this endlessly expanding game of chess we're playing, just like Jack decided to do. What does that mean? Maybe I'll go kill Jack myself, right now. Oh no 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 no! Rose, it is a much, much worse plan! He would probably kill you! Probably. 
But the scratch will wipe us out anyway, and reboot the conditions of our session. I suddenly don't feel much like sneaking through the back door of the furthest ring for retribution by distant supernova. I know what you mean. I was angry at Jack and wanted to stop him too, but we have to think of a more sensible way to do it! Whether my existing plan was sensible or not, I may have been allowing myself to be manipulated by an omniscient being regardless. What who? Hello, ladies. Ah! What? This is a private conversation. Private even to those who know it word for word already. Proceed. I will be here. Watching. Rose, who is this? Ignore him. I don't even know what's going on anymore. You were discussing Miss Lalonde's intrepid new variation on suicide. As one with a passion for the subject, I'm intrigued. Shh! Anyway, if it's true the gods have selected me for service, maybe the power they've given me will be sufficient. Maybe they wanted me to kill him all along. <laughs> Shh! Please don't, Rose. I know you are angry, but you aren't thinking straight. But I am. I'm fully aware I'll probably die and fail. Scratch happens, we start fresh, no recollection, no problem. No. Jade, as an ambassador of Skya, maybe you'd be willing to talk some sense into your friend. You should understand she's been corrupted by various entities with some rather questionable motives. Rose, maybe the white text guy is right. The Dark Gods gave you all these powers and seem to be helping us with dream bubbles and stuff, but... What if they're not actually good? They are enormous, ugly, and live in darkness. That doesn't necessarily make them bad. No, but I still don't trust them. If only there were a way to make this determination with certainty, through a reliable source within reach, for instance, at this exact moment, perhaps one that is spherical and devastatingly handsome. What's this weirdo talking about? The cue ball. Oh, yeah! I noticed you found it! I was worried it had been destroyed when my room blew up. Is he saying you can use it? Yes. And he is right. OMG! Does it work? It advised me to talk to you just now, so I guess so. Then maybe you should try it! Yes, Rose. Listen to Jade. She is far less manipulative than I. What are you suggesting I ask it? Well... Since we don't know much about the gods, why don't you ask it about them? So you're saying I should ask it if the gods are evil? I guess that is a way to put it. Even though at this point neither of you is highlighting my text to read it, this idea gets my vote. Go ahead. Ask, Sia. Sia. Ask. dark. You slip into the fabled Black Death trance of the Wogothics, quaking all the while in the blood eldritch throes of the Broodfester tongues. You advise the members of your complacency not to be alarmed, as they chronicle the events and tones bound in the tanned, writhing flesh of a tortured hell scholar, with runes stroked in the black tears bled from the corruption weary eyes of 50,000 imaginary occultists. But they fail to not be alarmed. This is because, as is now painfully obvious to anyone with a brain, you have basically gone completely off the deep end in every way. You have officially gone grimdark. Rose, resist urge to seek revenge. 
you make a half-hearted attempt to resist the urge. Alas, one is not easily shaken from the Broodfester tongues. They are stubborn throws. Big man, request time out. Lava. Alright, homies. Everybody, all y'all hate the big man. Wants to take a time out. The big man's about to wreck some havoc. In the yard. The court is on fire. Dude, come get the ruler. Check this. Dude, hurry, she's escaping from above. Okay, dude, no. Okay. How am I going to wreck some havoc in the... <laughs> You chump <laughs> Again with the metric system. What is it? Even with you and you. It's like you must be talking off on a joint to make you stop with <laughs> Something. I can't even think of. Something like that. It's so infuriating. Shit, where's the murder? Dude, no. Let me show you. No. No. Dude, you gotta snap it. Snap. It was at that point when you got distracted by the author's hot self insert. Who were you expecting? The Easter Bunny? You probably want to know how involved the big man wants to get into the story. How much will he fuck up this up? Well, all I've got to say to that is... Who want to know? I want to know. Tell me, and please be smug about it. Alright. As the indulgent self-inserts grow in frequency, you may find yourself increasingly afraid that my direct interference with the canonical events approaches inevitably. But you should understand that I understand that I am dealing with forces which, if handled recklessly, will nullify the basic ability of intelligent beings in all real and hypothetical planes of existence to give a shit. It would be stupid of me to mismanage these forces, and even stupider of you to worry about it, because it would be stupid for you to think I was stupid. In fact, I feel a little dumber just thinking about it. When the time comes, I will interact directly with the events of this narrative, but this moment will be responsibly confined to a passive intervention. It will be compact, surgical, and essential. My involvement will have such precision, I have even managed to quantify it in units of physical measurement. I will be involved in only the narrow corridor of space, through which light will pass in three nanoseconds. My window of influence, end to end, will be exactly one yard. Okay, anyway, let's get back to John. John, locate Tumor. John, look around. Now John, look inside. John, take Tumor. Now, return to the surface, John.
CD. Approach locals. You and your rabbit friend approach a gentleman wrapped in a fine white cloth, and his courageous cohort, a young man riding a great gust of wind. You are so impressed, you forget what you are supposed to be doing. John, reunite with Liv Tyler. Sweet, precious, beautiful Liv Tyler. You thought you'd lost her forever. Just like Bruce Willis did when he blew himself up with a nuclear bomb in the center of an asteroid the size of Texas. His heroism and fatherly pride were also the size of Texas. But your love for Liv is not fatherly, oh no. This reunion is with no loving daughter, but a loving movie star fantasy crush. Who happens to be in the form of Robot Bunny which has travelled through time and been given as a gift on five separate occasions, twice by you, thrice to you, and originally fished out of a sewer by Nicolas Cage on the silver screen. You forget the point you were supposed to be making, but you wonder where all of her sweet weapons went. She indicates in the language of plush toy pantomime that she has no idea. They all blew away in the breeze! John, retrieve Tiny Hammer. This Tiny Hammer is so ridiculous. It's too bad it is not the right size. You would love to wallop some imps with such a fanciful weapon. You guess you could just go around giving them little bops on the head with it, like a silly gavel. No, that would be too absurd, even for a great prankster like you. You will discard this rubbish immediately. Wait, what is this? Miss Tyler is handing you a note. John, one more thing. This rabbit, I'm sure you've noticed, is armed to the stitches. He's got all four of the funny little weapons that I mentioned that are all deadly as the fucking dickens. But that doesn't mean that they are meant exclusively for the paws of Mr. Terry Kaiser. That is the name I call him. Oh, heck no. You see, I adapted Terry with some doodads that you may deem practical. An infinite simulator which I used to little fire them down in the first place as well as a monstrosifier for when you would like to hugen them up and wield them yourself. You surely got enough juice in him to make them enormous if you wish, but that's silly! What would you even do with, say, a magic needle the size of a skyscraper for instance? Preposterous! I borrowed this technology from my grandmother who had quite a way with manipulating space. Legend tells she was something of a witch with the stuff. Once she was a brave hero like you and I, John, and the stars themselves twinkled in her cauldron. I would like to tell you who my grandmother is. I really would, but I can't. I think I have trouble keeping secrets. I like to be honest, just like you, and a lot of secrecy after a while gets me feeling a bit... jaded? <laughs> Green means grow, and red means shrink. See you soon, pal. J. Grandmother? You wonder who that could be? It's probably just Jade, what with all the time shenanigans. John, Hugen Hammer. You got the Warhammer of Zilly Who! All behold the glory of Zilly Who. You are so delighted by your rad new hammer and the cool Huguening abilities of Liv Tyler or Terry Kaiser? Or whatever her, his name is. Who the hell is Terry Kaiser anyway? Probably a movie star from the future. Who cares though? Your bunny will be Liv for life! Hearts, hearts, hearts. Hmm. You wonder what other neat things you can get Liv to monstrosify with her sweet eye beams? Wait. What happened to her green eye? 
And why is she feverishly gesticulating towards the fellow in the ghost sheets? Oh, this is so ridiculous! You cannot turn your back on these people to admire a beautiful hammer for even one moment. You think that is enough fooling around. It is time to get down to business again. The serious business of being an important and heroic leader. John, wear the hood. Be the leader. You are not their leader. You are their friend. There is a big difference. You prepare to issue your party a highly authoritative series of friendly requests. First, you request that everyone settle down. The squat fellow mediates between the two bickering parties and patches up Liv's missing eye. She is nothing if not accustomed to decades of repair work and quickly resumes her plucky demeanor. You then, in your most leaderly way, ask Liv to pilot that enormous battleship. She will now be known as Captain Tyler. She littlefies the ship down to something more manageable for a small bunny captain. Everyone is impressed. You give your wallet to your loyal chauffeur familiar. He looks puzzled. You inform the party that you will not be going on this journey. You must remain behind and continue looking for your father. But you insist their mission is the most critical of all. You know they can handle it. You believe in them. You instruct Captain Tyler to set a course for the ship's home. They must fly to Durs and deliver the tumor to the moon. Everyone salutes their intrepid friend leader. This is what teamwork is all about. And this guy... You guess this guy can go along and help out? Hey, who even is this guy anyway? I oh, guess it doesn't matter. He seems nice enough. Now John, bid farewell. Godspeed, heroes. You have all the faith in the world that they will be successful. As a friend leader, or sometimes known as a pal honcho, you have done an amazing job. You have come up with a plan and politely request ordered your loyal team to execute it. It is all falling into place perfectly. You are quite sure that you have not failed to account for even a single thing. John! I'm worried about Rose! I'm pretty sure she's on her way to look for Jack! I can't say for sure because I can't see her with my goggles anymore for some reason, but I'm fearing the worst. Just in case, you should try to intercept her before she does something stupid like try to fight him! Also, um, I guess you probably still don't know about your dad yet, do you? Darn, why do I always have to be the one to bring terrible news, huh? Uh, John? Oh god, please don't tell me your computer was in the wall you just gave that guy. Damn it, John! One of these days you will learn the value of having plenty of backup computers. In fact, whenever you finally leave the battlefield, I'm going to give you the code for a nice pair of lunch muffs. And then, I'm going to force you to keep them on your head at all times. Yeah, you're never going to read this, are you? Huh? Something is happening on the other side of the planet. Something ominous. Something... Grimdark. Oh, you are so glad that Grimdark is a real word, so that when things like this happen, that they may be described as such. Maybe your dad is over there. You believe you will investigate. John, approach Grim Darkness. John, you're heading into the blackout, so I won't be able to see you until you leave. But don't worry, I can still sense you're there. Because of awesome powers, remember? Smooth move ditching your computer like that, by the way. That was some incredible leadership you showed. Now I have to contact you through Rose, thus exposing me to the risk of actually having to talk to her. Your carelessness has put the Heroes of Light in a very awkward position, John. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> Just kidding. She's obviously a little too preoccupied at the moment to be sassing me. Just borrow her computer and talk to me when you get the chance, okay? I will be waiting. <laughs>